Yes, I think that now we are live on YouTube and we're ready to start. So let me start sharing my screen. But first of all, hi people from the YouTube that, that is going to watch this afterwards. Um, let's my, let me start sharing my screen and start the event. So question to you is, uh, can you see my screen? Okay, good. Oh, yeah. I see some. Uh, I see some people that they can see my screen. That's good. So welcome everybody. This is the second Agile Beer Global that we're uh, having in English. We also had other two in Portuguese for the Brazilian and the Portugal community, and this is the second one in English. So welcome everybody to this event. Uh, we're really happy to host this today. I'm going to be your host uh, for the Agile Beer. And it's nice to see some familiar faces also from Brazil, uh, from Portugal. So welcome everybody. Um, so let me just start sharing my screen and also setting up some agreements for us for the session today. Um, the first one we want to see, we want to discuss is to be patient with domestic interruptions. We we know that people have pets, people have kids, and then they can come to the screen. So don't feel offended or don't feel bad uh, with kids running around the house because this is a, a normal situation uh, based on the, the what we're living at the moment. Uh, also, grab your beer or wine or drink or water, whatever you want, just feel comfortable uh, having this uh, meetup with us. Uh, this is a new one that we just added to the, to the agreements based on the, the last meetup we had. Uh, let's not talk about politics. So this is not a fight to see if uh, one uh, one politic is better than the other. So let's just be agnostic about this. Uh, if it's possible, also please turn your camera and make on um, uh, during the lean beer. Uh, if you during the the talk, uh, please don't turn uh, your microphone on, uh, on as well. And we're live on YouTube. The tools that we're going to use are Zoom and Slice. We're going to send you also when needed. And the feedback and LinkedIn, we're going to also share with you on the chat. Uh, the first thing I would like to ask you to do is we really, really would like to know where you're from. Where are you attending this event? And for that, we created a word cloud on the menti.com that you can just use this code 364360. But I'm also going to share the link on Zoom. So you can also just copy from that. How can I put the chat function over here? I can do that, Steve. Okay, thanks. Because I couldn't find the, the chat. So please uh, add, where are you from? on the on the the link oh good we see here hoofdorp netherlands netherlands porto brazil dublin indianapolis oh that's good indiana usa sao paulo netherlands taubaté but oh, that's good bangalore i think Portugal, Porto, Braga. Oh, that's very good. Very good. Nice to see people from all over the world connecting to our event. So very happy to have you from all these places over here. I see Blumenau here. Good. Oh, D. Mern near Utrecht. Oh, good. So it's close to our home as well. Uh, me and Danny, we are from Aberystwyth. So I think it's a kind of close from us. Araraquara. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. So welcome everybody. Uh, we are really happy to have you here. Honestly, uh, we're going to just briefly talk about the history of Agile Beer, but then, uh, yeah, so just want to welcome you all from uh, all the cities and then let's just continue. So the Agile Beer today, we're based in several cities. Uh, we started in Rio de Janeiro, 
back in 2015, 2016. And it was a small community of the agilists wanted to share their knowledge and the situations that they were living. And it started very small in a, like in a pub, only like uh, five or six people talking. And now we grew from all these years. And this is all the locations that we have agile beer um, uh, all over the world. So we have Campinas in, Sao, in Brazil, Sao Paulo, Blumenau also in Brazil. We have Dublin and also we have London. It's Londres here because it's in Portuguese, but it's uh, London. Uh, we have the Netherlands. Uh, we have uh, brand new, and that's also very good, that is USA that we just started. We just created the first uh, meetup group in the USA. We also have Singapore and uh, Porto and Lisbon in Portugal. So these are all the cities that we are located. And the mission of the Agile Beer based on the Golden Circle from the Simon Sinek, we are a group of agilists that once you make the difference promoting lectures and dynamics with a lot of beer and fun. So we try to make this event the more interactive as possible. We just don't want to just give information without having discussion. So that's the moment where you can also share your pains, your frustration, the issues that you have in the organization. And we have a lot of people from the community to support and help you here. And how do we do that? Promote old way face to face because it's not face to face anymore. But we promote meetups with agilists or people interested in agility. Um, and why do we do that? Because we want to spread the agile mindset and share knowledge and experience with the sense of the community. So the main message that we have as Agile Beer since the day one when we started is that this event is from the community to the community. We don't want to have any money out of it. We don't want to have anything out of it. We just do this because we really believe in the power of the community and we're just the people that organize this event. But the, the most important uh, part of the Agile Beer, it's the people. And that's it's you. So thank you again, everybody, to uh, for being here. And these are some of the faces of the people that organize Agile Beer all over the world. So we have Coca and Raj for Dublin and London, Lucas for Singapore, Steve, brand new uh, organizer from the USA, Danny and me from the Netherlands, Gabe, uh, Gabriel, Fabiano, and Sonny from Porto and Lisbon. Rio, we have Zé, Mauricio, Jaqueline, Paulo, Samuel. Sao Paulo, we have Pedro, Wanderson, Cindy, Marcelo organizing it. Uh, and we also have the people from uh, Campinas, Alison, Cristiani, Leandro organizing in Campinas. And last but not least, we have Blumenau with Dione, Rafael, Gleica, and Mauricio organizing it. So uh, thank you very much also for the organizing, for keeping the event alive in all these cities running one event per month. It's not easy to organize. A lot of people also think it's just going to the platform, announcing the meetup, going there and running the show. But there's a lot of background discussions that we have to make sure that the same experience that you have in a natural beer in the Netherlands, you're going to experience the same whatever, whatever you go. Uh, we, we really believe that uh, we want to give the same experience for all the events globally. So. We're also going to send you uh, this uh, link. This is our social media. So we have a Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and also YouTube. And you can also find us on the Meta platform. We're going to share this with you. So feel free also to share with your friends and invite them to the community. And today we're going to have a quick talk um, uh, from JP talking about the leadership leverage for thriving agility. So JP, uh, I'm just going to uh, stop sharing my screen. The word is yours, the floor is for yours. Thank you very much. Now we are able to see the screen, uh, JP. Now are we're you? here. <laughs> So I can see. Yeah. Now we're able to see and hear you. Yes. 
Yes. Okay. Great. So let me get started here. And a uh, warm welcome again. And uh, I would, first of all, I would like to acknowledge the great effort that is, you know, that goes in in organizing uh, Agile BR meetups. I was fortunate to be part of one of the the last meetups, and it was an amazing thing to see so many people coming up and you know figuring out, discovering new ways of connecting and and staying connected. I was really glad that I was part of that, and and. Again, thanks uh, everyone for giving me this opportunity to uh, share some some bit of insight uh, from my experience in the leadership space. So warm welcome to all of you uh, who are connected from different parts of the world. So uh, this is a 20 minutes talk and I was just thinking about what are some of the key uh, things that I want to probably share. And then of course, uh, learn from your perspectives about what I share. So I've tried to keep it very brief. So let me just jump in here. A bit of background about me. Uh, I'm a founder of two companies, uh, Aritha and Agility Moments. My current company is Agility Moments, where I, I'm focusing on uh, the leadership, uh, enabling leaders to act amid uncertainty and, and rapid changes. And uh, I have a background of practicing Agile from 2002 long-term practitioner and also um, dealt with some of the education around uh, you know um, leadership education both executives and the agile leadership i'm also a certified scrum uh, enterprise coach from scrum alliance that's a bit about me and uh, whenever i have some free time i i love to practice martial arts which i learned some time back and also uh, spend some time in public policy discussions especially around education for primary uh, in the primary education space. So also in the context of leadership, I would like to um, share that I'm a part of uh, a global community, like very much like Agile Beer community. This is a global community of educators and coaches in the leadership space. Uh, all of us uh, who are here, uh, about 26 people are leaders, and also coaches who are who are practicing, who are helping others and grow this community of enabling leaders, helping with each other. Just wanted to say that I belong to this awesome community and probably represent and share some insights from there too in today's talk. Okay, so let's jump in. The, the, the topic, uh, I would say uh, the topic is really focused on the leverage that a lot of leaders have and how do we use that leverage to enable what I call as thriving agility. And I'm, I'm going to talk about what I really mean by thriving agility in a short while from now. But before that, let's jump in to figure out what is this leverage I'm talking about. Now, I wanted to uh, share this quote um, uh, from uh, Edgar Shane. It's on leadership and culture are the two sides of the same coin. You ever wondered, right? Uh, I mean, I'm sure most of you have uh, experienced either yourself in a leadership role uh, or you've worked probably with other leaders in your organization. And if you notice, if you are in a startup, uh, the leadership, the, the promoters of the company pretty much define the culture by the way they walk their talk, the way they conduct, the way they show up themselves, right? When it's really small, it's the leaders who are actually almost represent the culture of the organization. And, and when an organization grows and it grows beyond some complexity, and you see that the organization design kicks in and start defining a lot of behavior uh, in the system and people start behaving based on the systemic design. And, in, and you reach a point where any new leader joins a large organization, the culture starts shaping the leadership, right? It's like you know, a symbiotic relationship. In a smaller organization, leaders define the culture and shape, and larger organization, culture influences leaders, and they go hand in hand, right? So with this context, what I wanted to share is that the leverage, because of this uh, nature of leadership, leaders have this, the leverage with leaders is that they have an opportunity and the ability to influence and shape the culture of a team, of an organization, a community, 
and even a society in general. This is true irrespective of the size uh, of our uh, setting here, right? So that's a unique opportunity. We have an ability to shape uh, and influence. If you are in the early part of the organization, we can pretty much define and, and shape the way we want. If it is a large organization, we have the leverage to tweak certain aspects of the system design so that right culture can be shaped. Again, uh, when we say right culture, I'm not really uh, talking about right or wrong culture. I'm talking about a culture that enables uh, all the people to uh, align with the values that leaders believe in, a lot of employees believe in, what everyone believes in, right? So that's the leverage uh, that leaders have. And, and I'm sure all of you would be able to relate to this. Now, why are we talking about it uh, today? Uh, in fact, it has been spoken multiple times across the timeline over the last 100 years. But I want to say that this is very much relevant today. And let's explore why. Uh, a few uh, days back, a couple of weeks back, I made a presentation somewhere else on you know, balancing the realities. Today's leaders in the in the in the tough times of COVID-19 are a challenge with balancing business realities on one side and the people needs on the other side. And if you look at that, there are investors who who care for you know uh, their ROI and there are creators. It's like all of all of us, the people uh, who care for sense of belongingness. Do I belonging? Do I belong to this organization? Do I connect to the purpose? And both of us are also. Um, equally influenced by our customers who care for their needs, right? And now if you look at all of this in the context of an organization, what really, uh, you know, uh, is revealing, uh, which is a dramatic paradigm shift in the last 100 years, is that, you know, what we want to call as Copernican revolution in management. This is coined by uh, Steve Denning, who is one of the thought leaders in the space, who has been studying the organizational agility uh, across many organizations over the last few years, and also an author of uh, famous, famous books called Radical Management. So the key point he has highlighted is, gone are the days where customers were revolving around a firm, which pretty much focused on increasing the stakeholder value for the firm. And now we are living in an era where the firms are revolving around customers. They pretty much define in a crazy manner the existence of an organization and the, the survival and the thriving of an organization. So that being the case, in today's tough time, we can realize that we need to cater to the needs of the investors because they fuel the existence the, of the organization. At the same time, we have people who actually end up fulfilling the needs of the customer. So we got to balance. That's the tough challenge and leaders can leverage their ability to balance this. But it does not come by default because we have to really distinguish between, are we focusing just on the survival today because of the tough, time, tough times? Or can we also do something to uh, you know, thrive once the tough times, you know, uh, the intensity decreases and we are back to new normal, right? And of course, it's never going to be kind of a stable state. There will be uncertainty. So how do we really balance? And that's why this is so important and relevant today. And, and I wanted to bring this to your uh, notice. Now, when we try to leverage uh, the leaders, uh, I mean, the, the leverage that leaders have, why is it not easy for all the leaders? Right? We can reflect on our, our, ourself and the, the fellow leaders that, inter, that we interact with. We are challenged uh, on many aspects. I wanted to highlight behavioral challenge to leaders as well as organizational challenge. Peter Drucker clearly calls out that the leader of the future will, will have to know how to ask because traditionally we, we have been known to tell people how to do or what to do. And now it's the time to ask and involve a lot of co-creation. But is asking others to lead or co-lead, is it easy? Probably not for many, many of us. And also uh, the three key challenges at the organization level that leaders face as highlighted by Gary Hamill in his video about future, manage, future of management. And there's a great book around that. 
exponential change, hyper competition, commoditized knowledge, right? I really encourage you to listen to his video to get insight. But essentially, we are living in a world where the change is uh, changing, the pace of change has changed. It's become exponential. We have hyper competition. Traditional barriers to the competition are blurred. And Google kind of companies and tools have commoditized the knowledge. Everyone ha has access to same. How do you differentiate? How do you bring in innovation? Now, with this as a context for you know uh, talking about the leverage and why this is very important, let's spend a few more minutes on co-creating the thriving agility. Now, before I jump in, what exactly is the thriving agility, right? If you really look into current scenario, on one hand, we have to do a lot of cost optimization, uh, a lot of um, possibly efficient way of working. And of course, you would have realized it can't happen on a all of a sudden, we have to have some systems thinking in place, some, some thought leadership in place. And even now we can get started with that. And that's all about surviving just to survive. But when we're talking about thriving, uh, it was the need was there even before COVID-19 kind of a situation. So, you know, have you seen uh, observed many organizations today where uh, they probably need to uh, use strategies like blue ocean strategy instead of competing uh, with with uh, random guys. Let's let's align and join hands and create co-create some new opportunities that otherwise don't exist. How do we embrace this ecosystem? Right now, the the shift is beyond our organization. How do we work together as an ecosystem of organizations which are committed to deliver something for the society? as an end purpose, right, for the customer. So that's about thriving versus surviving. So how can we co-create as leaders? I really want to end this talk with a few specific pointers on what can we do right now, and then how can we get into the journey? So before we get into how do we do this, let's understand what are barriers for co-creation? What's stopping us, the leaders, all of us, who are in the leadership role from using the leverage we have in our roles, what's stopping? And if you really go uh, and deeply study, uh, this is what we have. And this is, by the way, from Marshall Goldsmith, uh, which, uh, which is a very uh, renowned organization for executive coaching, leadership coaching, has done a survey of 85,000 plus leaders across the globe, across different cultures. And we fundamentally boil it down to about 20 ineffective habits most of us, all leaders have. And we demonstrate this, we exhibit this, which come on our own way for enabling co-creation. Just as a summary, you know, we have promoting my value, right? I, we attach too much significance for myself, ourself, and that will kill the possibility of co-creation. And overusing some emotions without knowing the impact of that with our colleagues and empowering our own ego and upholding certain boundaries, right? Uh, for those of you who are interested, there is a great detail uh, in Marshall Goldsmith website here for each of this category that I mentioned. I just want to pick one of them as an example. Let's say promoting my value. Um, and I'm sure you can relate to this yourself as a leader or some of the leaders you've worked with. You know, many a times during a conversation in, in, in team setting, in the organization setting, we add too much significance for my idea, right? And we pretty much sometimes based on how smart we are, we can even get people onto our track, though we look like we are, we are allowing a lot of um, you know, opinions, perspectives. At the end of the day, we know how to drive using my way, right? Or, or let's say passing a judgment on someone's idea without even allowing the person to share the holistic perspective, right? So many of these are, are very subtle behaviors, subtle habits that we end up you know, uh, behaving without even realizing that we are doing this. And that's actually killing a lot of possibility of embracing the co-creation from our colleagues, from our team members, from our partners and vendors, anyone for that matter, um, uh, those who interact with leaders. So the first step is to really become aware of uh, these ineffective habits. And then uh, we can think about overcoming. So 
when it comes to overcoming this ineffectiveness, I again wanted to share uh, another uh, quote here. We are what we do repeatedly. So excellence then is not an act, but a habit, right? So if, you, if you're familiar with this, you can see that we almost have, um, when, we, when you want to do our self-awareness, we can always discover what are some of the default habits that we do, uh, that we practice as a leader. And while doing that, what are some of the ineffective habits that I just uh, showcased in the previous slide that we normally tend to do, which will kill the co-creation possibility. So becoming aware of this with a lot of self-reflection, maybe seeking feedback from our colleagues uh, is a great first step. And I really wanna again share this that awareness precedes choice and choice precedes change. So if you really wanna bring any change not in the people, because we don't have to change any people, any person, right? Every, every person is whole perfect and complete uh, by themselves, but their behaviors are a reflection of the system within which they operate. If we have that awareness, then we are talking about changing the results, changing the context within which we operate. If you want to bring that to enable co-creation, then we got to choose some new habits. And to choose the new habits, we have to be aware of our current or default habits. That's where the, the first step starts. So, so with this, uh, I just want to spend another two minutes on how can we go about developing new habits and how can we get started with this? I'm not going to go into details because this is a journey by itself. It's a personal transformation of, of a leader, personal transformation of yourself, your behaviors, your, your competencies and skills have to be grown to the next levels, right? So just from the beginning point, um, you know, we can always think about what are some of the things in our day-to-day -day work that we end up doing almost all the time? Or what are some of the habits where we lead a few initiatives where we involve others? And what are some of the uh, aspects where we actually take a back seat, possibly coach and guide and allow a lot of other people to do and lead, right? So in a day, typically every leader goes through this different mindset and, and you can introspect for yourself. If you are too much in this do category or lead and very less in coach, that means you may have to take up the journey of decreasing this do and lead and possibly enhancing the coach capacity so that there is a possibility where others can come and co-create, right? You, so it's, it's a big awareness and big self-realization that I could be wrong as a leader. Let me take a step back and how can I allow other bright minds, diverse minds to come and co-discover, co-create? That's a huge transition. So in order to really do it practically, uh, my, my key message as a last takeaway from this talk is create awareness to your default habits and choose one behavior at a time to take to another level of leadership, right? And this is something that works, that has worked for me. And like I mentioned, I also work with the Global Agile Leadership Guides and we engage a lot of leaders across the organization. They all have you know, realized that focusing on one or two development area, one or two habits, one or two behaviors to, to replace. In fact, um, uh, the habit um, reminds, reminds us that it's not easy to change a habit. And we also realize we don't have to be in the game of changing. Instead, uh, we, can be, we could be um, in, the, in the game of replacing a current habit with a new habit, right? We are more better off just as an example, so that it's more concrete. You know, I was, I was coaching a, a leader from an organization and uh, the leader after going through several education and coaching session, all of a sudden realized that they have, uh, I mean, he, he had a habit of talking too much with, uh, with a good intention, but that was not allowing others. So the person started consciously practicing, instead of talking, let me start writing on a sticky note the moment as a thought comes that I wanted to speak, let me write that down. And after doing this for some times, the, the leader realized that, you know, because I held myself and just recorded here, I see that many points got covered by others. And I only probably have to share something which is a delta. And that way 
I, I started picking up this habit and started giving room for others, right? That is a small, tiny, subtle behavioral change. And that's what it takes to start this journey. Okay. So, and, and that's all I had in this talk to talk about uh, in this short 20 minutes, the leverage we have and how can we go about using that leverage for co-creation. And uh, for those of you who are interested to dive deeper into this and develop this in your journey, we have this, uh, you know, various education and coaching from my company called Agility Moments. And I've partnered with some of the renowned leaders and organizations called Agile Leadership Journey, Marshall Goldsmith, and Execution Agility is uh, my homegrown model. We can help you to be in this journey for a longer time. And, and that's all. Thank you very much. And I'd be open for any questions. Oh, JP, thanks a lot. I see a lot of people already thanking you on the chat. Saying like, thanks, a lot of uh, uh, things for them to think about and a lot of things for them to read after your talk as well. So uh, thanks a lot for bringing. Uh, I just want to give the opportunity for people if they have any question, please unmute yourself and feel free to ask any question to JP before we, we move to the next part of the event. Um, so is there any question that uh, any of you would like to, to ask JP about this? Yeah, sure. I always have questions. <laughs> oh, Gunnar. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Good. Um, well, I took a lot of notes from the presentation, which is always a sign uh, that I enjoyed it a lot. And the, the first question I always have when I uh, see something like this is, well, I'm a developer, so I'm not a manager in an organization. Yep. And I know that everybody has his or her limits. Yep. How can I inspire or how can I ignite the flame of change in management? Yeah, yeah. As, my as own a, company. Okay, great. You know, in fact, uh, that's, a, that's a great question, uh, by the way, Gunnar. So, you know, I want to, I want, um, to um, make people realize that we are talking about leadership as a role and not necessarily as a title. So, uh, and, and you would have realized that whether we are a developer, whether you're a scrum master, whether you're a technical lead and all the way up to CXO, we have an ability to influence by taking a lead, right? So, so the way uh, a lot of these models work is by role modeling ourselves, by working on behave, our own behaviors and just keeping it transparent. In fact, uh, you know, with Marshall Goldsmith, there is this uh, concept called stakeholder center coaching. So you're going to involve your peers and uh, your probably bosses and your subordinates, all of them who are key stakeholders in your own growth by, by being vulnerable to acknowledge our own weaknesses and seeking something called feed forward, not just the feedback, feed forward suggestions, right? Normally, when we speak to them, you know, hey, uh, you know, let's say I take the example of Raj. You know, I had this uh, habit that I wanted to focus on, and I've done an attempt for last uh, month. Can you share me some feedback? That's one way of seeking the feedback. And at the end of it, apart from thanking them, do you also have some suggestions how I can do it differently in the next one month? That's going to build a lot of commitment and trust and influencing factor, right? So, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, JP. Uh, thanks, JP. I see another question here on the chat. Uh, how do you see organizations moving from a management to leader coaches? Okay. Yeah. So, so if I understand the question, this what are some of the trends around uh, a management oriented company to uh, leadership focused companies? <clears throat> yeah. Right. So, so again, yeah. This is also. Um, um, possibly a result of the big revolution that happened in management. You know, you would have heard about terms like management 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. And in the last 100 years, we have started from Frederick Trailer's Taylorism to, you know, uh, the Toyota kind of leadership where, you know, you empower every person on the floor to pull the chain and bring any change to now we are no longer in that heroic zone. And the only option is to co-create by having as many diverse people as possible. That's today's leadership. So in a way, both management and leadership, I would see that they're kind of blended now with a focus on co-creation. If you're a manager, you no longer can 
um, magically expect some results or some kind of uh, ownership to happen from people because today's people have choices, right? Um, this is not the only company that they can they need to work for, right? At the same time, today's uh, uh, economic scenarios uh, uh, require us to be more creative and creativity can only happen by having more people, more minds. So kind of a blended way of working in, uh, and Google has experimented pretty well with the management discipline and leadership. I think everywhere there is an experiment. And probably I would like to call this as agile leadership without so much emphasis on the agile methods, but it's more about agility, right? That's something which is a big change in the management. Thanks, JP, for bringing that up. And yep. uh, we, we still have time for one last question. So if somebody would like to speak up and ask another question to JP, please uh, unmute, unmute yourself. Gunnar, can also be you, as you mentioned that you have multiple questions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've learned my most important question. I'm already very <laughs> thankful for everything I learned. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so JP, uh, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. It was very enlightening and also a lot of fit for thought. A lot of things that we still need to search, research, read after your talk. So thank you very much again uh, yeah. for bringing this topic to us. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I think Thanks a lot. It. And I would like to stay engaged. I'll be there till the end of the session. I really would be curious to learn from others as well. Yeah. Thank That's you. very good. That's very good. Okay. So let me share my screen over here. So I think I need you to stop, JP, to share. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to figure out stop sharing, but it gives me a new share option. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's already stopped, isn't it? can still see uh, your screen. Cindy, oh, okay. if you have the ownership, I think you can override his. Oh, yeah, I guess I yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, with that said, I just, uh, uh, we're moving to the next part of the event, that is the Lean Beer. I'm going to explain how the exercise works. Uh, but before we move on, I think we're going to close our live stream on YouTube. So then the, the Lean uh, Beer that we're going to have is not going to be recorded. So thank you very much for everybody watching on YouTube today or maybe any other day you're watching, please uh, uh, look for ourselves on the Meetup community and we're more than happy to have you here next time. Bye. Danny, so you wanted to say something? Yeah, channel. let me try to take the picture then before we, we close.